Shalom to you. Um, in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. I just want to make this uh, quick video to show you the differences between the teachings about the false messiah. There is a false messiah. Um, the apostles teach about the spirit of Antichrist and that spirit in the end times manifesting in the Antichrist or the false messiah himself. And so we're going to do a comparison between the false messiah and the true messiah, which people really seem not not to want to know the Jewish Messiah, they don't want to admit that he was born into a Jewish background to fulfill what you might call the Jewish feast days, which are actually biblical feast days. Um, people seem to hate, hate Jews uh, without reason. Um, you know, you can hate those that are in power, the elite and all that, we're not really meant to hate because if you're born again you're meant to pray for those who are in power, according to Romans 3.13. Um, but if you're in Christ, you're the one who truly has the power. And, and uh, unless you're born again, you, you truly don't um, understand that. Um, to clarify, you know, there's just certain things that probably as believers or, you know, whatever, you know, we, we can't really change the power structure until Yeshua comes back and, and defeats Satan. Uh, there's very little humanity could really do, except you get born again and you ask God um, what he would like you to do. And this is one of the things that we should do as believers is to teach about the true Messiah of Israel. Now the first point is that the false Messiah was born around the birth of the, the sun god, the festival of Mithras or Saturnalii, which is around December 25th. The true messiah would have uh, most likely been born in one of the fall or the autumn festivals, most likely the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot or Booths, because God promised to come and dwell or tabernacle with man in a human body. As we know that Yeshua um, spoke of his his um, body as a temple. His name is uh, Jesus. Now this is an English translation from the Hebrew Yeshua. Uh, it seems like a step away from it. In fact, it seems almost more like Jesus, which is meant to be a Spanish translation, but. Why not just uh, call his name Yeshua? Because that's the phonetic translation, the proper phonetic translation from the Hebrew. Uh, in the Arabic, in the Quran, they translate it as Isa. Why is that? That's not salvation in Arabic. The salvation word in Arabic is Yeshua. Yeshua. travel to other lands, for example India, um, they say Yesha or Yesu Prabhu, you know. Now, the next point is, well it's, it's written here he came for the lost. Now there's been a lot of words deleted from the modern translations. He did come for the lost, but more specifically he came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because that's what Yeshua says, I came not but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, not something you hear about every Sunday in a church. But that's what Yeshua taught, that's what he said. So why don't we just stick to what the Bible says and what Yeshua taught? Stick to what his name is. Stick to the fact he came to fulfill the Jewish or biblical festivals. He didn't come to destroy them or do away with them or make up new ones. He himself said he was in the Father. So if you're in the creator of the universe, then you're not going to be making up your own 
pointless religion which the church is guilty of is guilty of that sin which I'm describing right now um, some Christians argue that Yeshua broke the seventh, seventh day Sabbath by plucking corn from the fields now there's nothing in the Torah that says that that is a sin um, it's all about interpretation when you read the Bible when you study Yeshua's life and uh, he couldn't be the spotless blemishless Passover lamb if he had sinned and so this is why um, there's a lot of false teachers out there that say that Yeshua sinned no he didn't sin he kept the seventh day perfectly in fact he said that he was the Lord of the Sabbath think about that I think the Lord of the Sabbath is going to tell you to um, work on that day no, he's going to tell you to enjoy it because the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath next point um, taught new commandments now I think Yeshua goes into a lot more detail about how to he basically demonstrates and shows all of us how to love one another as he has loved us you could call that a new commandment but in fact it's not because he was just keeping the ten commandments and he was just saying like the way I did it now you do the same thing but the point is we cannot do it without the Holy Spirit in our lives it's impossible to do the things that Yeshua did without the Holy Spirit and so it's very much up to us as believers to make sure that we are filled with the Lord's Spirit and we continue to be filled with God's Spirit um, every day, every week if you like if you want to um, go off on a Sabbath and seek the Lord some people get up early every morning and pray and praise God you know so it's it just entirely depends on um, you dedicating yourself to the Lord we just had the feast of dedication there a couple of weeks ago see all of the biblical festivals represent a spiritual quality uh, or, or a teaching that we must um, do in order to uh, be closer to God through his Messiah um, now the next few ones I'll, I'll just uh, go through quickly died on Good Friday ok that's the antitype true messiah died before passover which is the 14th of aviv buried friday night buried beginning of unleavened bread resurrected easter sunday at sunrise uh resurrected first fruits before sunrise that, that's all biblical you know about the latter what i was saying there you can check that in your bible all these first ones about the false messiah are called traditions of men which Yeshua came to really do away with because the Pharisees were guilty of traditions of men different types of traditions but they're still traditions of men um, in the grave for one day and two nights in the grave for three days and three nights nailed the commandments on the cross nailed our sins uh, to the cross I think there's a passage in uh, is it Romans I think Paul says um, that the Lord nailed the um, oh, what's the word again uh, I'll come back to that one I just can't quite think of the the word for that at the moment fulfilled the law so we wouldn't have to keep it fulfilled the law on his coming as prophesied you know so that we could um, be forgiven through his blood and that uh, through faith Romans 3.31 we can, we can learn to keep his commandments replaced Israel with the church replaced nothing including Israel taught against the law of Moses taught the law of Moses is about him right? taught against the law of Moses which the church does and then the true Messiah basically says to the Pharisees you know the law of Moses is speaking about me it's a big difference there um, if you can't see these differences please let me know please leave your comments below I'll try and 
pray for you or give you a few Bible verses or whatever it may be to try and aid your understanding. Um, just go back to the the one in uh, Neil. It talks about statutes, um, ordinances, and statutes. Okay, and these ordinances and statutes were really about um, sacrificial laws. Um, you know, so what what the the Levite, the Levitical priest would do when he was sacrificing an animal. So all these things are nailed to the cross, There's, but the commandments themselves are still very much active on the earth. Otherwise, there wouldn't be sin if there if there's no commandments. You know, there's commandments there to show us what righteousness is and what sin is if you break these commandments. I hope that's clear enough. Um, okay, the next one. Opposed the law in the Torah opposed man-made laws, not the Torah. So we have touched on that. Um, choose Gentiles and reject Israel. Graft Gentiles into Israel. Just say that one again. Choose Gentiles and reject Israel, which uh, the, ch the church really teaches subliminally. It might not teach it from the pulpit, but it does teach it subliminally. Uh, and through our um, what's the word? I've got to come back to that one. I'm forget, forgetting some words today that I should be. Uh, it's not coming to me. Tacit. Um, through our silence, as it were, we're almost accepting what the pulpit is silently teaching. But the truth is, when you're born again, you're grafted into Israel. Read Romans 11. Sunday is the Lord's day, uh, is the Lord of the Sabbath, yeah, Yeshua, Yeshua is the Lord of the Sabbath, so I, th they've changed the day, you can read about Hebrews 4, about that Yeshua didn't come to change the Sabbath day, <laughs> it's ridiculous isn't it, well some people say that there's no Sabbath, other people say well I just came to change the day, no, 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 it was the church that changed the day and then, you know, if you can't work that one out. No, uh, no one know when he will come back. He will return at an appointed time. So it'll be like a festival of Israel. Could be the Feast of Trumpets. Could be, um, most likely, it could be the Feast of Trumpets. I, I would say that's what it's suggesting here. I, I would agree with that. Um, Peter is the foundation of the church. Peter's confession is the foundation of the church. So, so when Yeshua changes uh, his name, uh, Simon Peter, he was referred to. I think he, his his main name was Simon, but you know Yeshua gave him a new name called Peter, which means rock. Uh, and on his confession, when Peter confessed Yeshua as the, the King of Israel and the Messiah, and the Son of God, very important. Then. The Lord gave him this name, um, Kepha, Peter, which means rock. Does that mean that Peter is the foundation of the church? No. Yeshua is the foundation of, slip of the tongue there, of born again Israel, which is the church. Born again Israel is the, is the true church. There's a false church, there's a harlot church. Church just meaning congregation, right? Not talking about a church building here. Okay, you must you must know that by now that I don't that I don't advocate really. Um, I I I sometimes when I'm bored I might go along or if I'm called if somebody wants to go to church I might pop along to a congregation. But you're definitely going to be finding them teaching about more about the false Messiah than the true Messiah. That's just fact. Very very sad. I, I wish I could go to a church that taught you know about the true messiah but haven't really been to one I'll be honest I've probably never been to a congregation that's really taught um, right down the line here about what the true messiah who the true messiah is what he came to do um, they've always got something withholding something you know from from uh, 
made some sort of deal with, with the devil, I feel a lot of these congregations just have to slip little lies here here and there into their congregations. The flat earth, by the way, again, that, that that's just like, you may as well argue about the shape of a rock on the ground. It's about the same level of um, intellect that if you want to really argue about the shape of the earth, go and argue about the, the, the shape of a mountain or the shape of a rock um, in the ground. It's just, it's just absolutely very dumb, but people want to do that in the last days because they think that it's important and that their little minds think that, that's, uh, that, that they're actually doing God a service doing that. <clears throat> no one knows when he comes back. He will return at a point in time. Peter is the foundation of the church. Peter's confession is the foundation of the church. I want you to pray the sinner's prayer, which you can do. You know, basically through hearing the gospel, you you, you understand you're a sinner. You, you come under conviction, and you want salvation, and and then you ask salvation, who is Yeshua, into your life. But the most important thing is that when you commit yourself to the Lord or dedicate yourself to the Lord in that way, you should become a disciple. You become then the Lord's disciple. That's the start of your discipleship, not the end, not the finished article, not not like, uh, oh, I just said this prayer and I'm going to heaven. That's just the start of your discipleship, just as, as it was Peter's, the start of Peter's discipleship when he said the sinner's prayer prayer, we didn't really say the sinner's prayer, he just confessed, Yeshua, you are the King of Israel, the Son of God, and you're, you're the Savior of the whole world, you know, and, and, and Yeshua said, flesh and blood did not um, reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven, right, it's like, it's one of the biggest things you can do when you get a revelation of who Yeshua is, that's really the start of your discipleship and then the Lord deals with your sin when you realize what he did for you on the cross and um, you, you, you just ask him to come and cleanse you you ask the, the Holy Spirit and you know and start your relationship with him it's different for us all you know but the, 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 the rock of our salvation is Yeshua uh, the false Messiah wants you to live your best life now <laughs> your best life now what Yeshua came to do he came to make all the communism he came to make all the, the rich very poor right like communism and he came also to make the poor extremely rich which is just your communist manifesto that's the false messiah but the true messiah wants you to live a holy life that's, that's the most important thing he wants you to live a holy life. Are you doing that? <laughs>